Hi guys, this is the video for Unit 2, Lesson 15, and we are going to start learning about something called part-part-whole ratios. To warm up for this lesson, <clears throat> I want you to take a look at these four number sentences and just decide if you think they are true or false. So go ahead and pause the video and think through those and decide whether they are true or false. Okay, hopefully you had enough time to think through that first activity. Um, the first statement is going to be true. If you would think about what 45 over 5 means, that means 45 divided by 5, which is equal to 9. And if we take 1 fifth times 45, that would also give us 9. So both of them are equal to 9, so it's true. The second statement is false. It has that 1 fifth times 20. Well, if you break 20 into groups of 5, there would be 4 of them, so 1 of those is equal to 4. And 1 fourth of 24 is 6, so 4 and 6 are not equal to each other. For the third statement, it says that 42 times 1 sixth is equal to 1 sixth times 42. That one is true, and if you remember, you can multiply in any order, so just because they are in a different order doesn't mean we won't get the same answer. And the last one is also true, because when multiplying, we can break it apart into smaller problems and then add them together to find our final answer. We're going to move on to activity 15-2 here, which is called cubes of paint. It says that a recipe for maroon paint calls for five milliliters of red paint and three milliliters of blue paint. Okay. It says to use snap cubes to represent the amounts of red and blue paints in the recipe, then draw a sketch. Um, since you don't have the snap cubes, that's okay. We can still draw a sketch. So pretend we have five parts of red. So we have five red and three blue. Since you might not have colors, I'm going to draw these in the separate shapes here. So it says, what amount does each cube represent? So if we have five milliliters of red paint, we have one, two, three, four, five. That means each one represents one milliliter of paint. So this was equal to one, 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 and we have five all together. Then we have one, one, and one. So we have three all together here, and like I said, five up here. Okay. So how many milliliters of maroon paint would there be? So if we were to mix five red and three blue together, we would have a total of eight milliliters of maroon paint. And we found that just by adding the amount of our red plus our blue. All right, question two says, suppose each cube represents two milliliters. So this is kind of like when we double a recipe. So what if these cubes were all worth two? How many would we have then? So if we all had two, there would actually be 10 milliliters. And we can find that by doing two plus two plus two plus two plus two, or you can think of five times two. With the blue, there would be six, so you can think of two plus two plus two, or three times two. And total, there would be 16, which we find by doing 10 plus six, or we can do eight times two. Okay, remember that's just like doubling a recipe. Now suppose each cube represented five milliliters. How much paint would there be? So what if each one of these red blocks was actually worth five? So we can think of five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So there would be 25 red. And we could find that by counting or by multiplying five times five. Same with blue, five, 10, 15. Or we could multiply five times three. So we would have a total of 40 milliliters which we could find by doing 25 plus 15, or by doing eight times five. <coughs> All right, when you're ready, go ahead and flip the page. We're gonna continue with this example, so you might wanna keep it handy. 
Now suppose that we had 80 milliliters of maroon paint. So now we know, whoops, now we know how much paint we actually have. And now they want to know how much blue and red paint would there be. So we need to find if we had 80 milliliters, how many batches would that be? Okay, so if you could think of, <clears throat> we started with 8, so we could think of 80 divided by 8, where we started, equals what? Well, that equals 10. <coughs> so that's going to tell us that each cube is now worth 10. So if we look back here, we have 5 blue cubes, and they're each worth 10. So we can think of 10 times 5, that means we have 50 milliliters of red. We had 3 blue, so 10 times 3, 30 blue. And 50 plus 30 adds up to 80, and that's how we got our total of maroon paint. So now it says if the original recipe is for one batch, how many batches are in the 80 milliliters of maroon paint? That would be 10 batches, and we know that because 8 is in one batch, and if we multiply it times 10 to get 80, then the number that we multiply by is our number of batches. Okay, in our final activity, we're going to learn about something called a tape diagram. And a tape diagram is something new, we haven't used it yet. But what it is, is it's a horizontal strip um, that kind of looks like snap cubes put together. And each part is worth a particular value. And it can be any value as long as each of the parts are the same as one another. So if you think of snap cubes, if you would put a whole bunch together, that's kind of what we're going to be drawing here. So let's just take a try at this first one. It says the ratio of students wearing sneakers to those wearing boots is 5 to 6. If there are 33 students in the class and all of them are wearing either sneakers or boots, how many are wearing sneakers? Okay, so first let's draw our tape diagram. So we have two things here. We have sneakers and we have boots. So this is kind of like a double number line where we still label both of our parts. And for sneakers, it says that we're going to have five parts. So one, two, three, four, five. Just like a double diagram with your tick marks, try and draw these as equally as you can. Normally in class, you could grab um, graph paper to help you make your boxes, but since you don't have them, We'll just draw them to our best of our ability right now. So our boots, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And notice how I'm lining up my lines just like on our double number line when we lined up our tick marks. Okay, so it says that we have 33 students and we didn't know how many are wearing boots. So we need to figure out how much each square is worth in our tape diagram. So it says that our ratio is 5 to 6, so that means that we have a total of 11 here. And since our total students is 33, we can take our total students divided by the total in our ratio to get the amount that each part of our tape diagram is worth. So it says we get 3, so each one of these is worth 3 kids. And our final question says, how many of them are wearing sneakers? So we have one, two, three, four, five, and there's three for each. So that would mean that there are 15 total wearing sneakers, and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six times three, 18 wearing boots. So our final answer for this problem would be 15 students that are wearing sneakers. That might have been a little bit tricky and confusing, so we're going to practice a couple more here. <clears throat> a recipe for chicken marinade mixes three parts of oil with two parts of soy sauce and one part orange juice. If you need 42 cups of marinade in all, how much of each ingredient should you use? Okay, so let's start by drawing our tape diagrams here. And we have three parts, so we're going to have three tape diagrams. 
So let's start with oil. It says three parts oil. And remember, if you had graph paper, you could just do three um, squares on the graph paper. And that's what you would normally do in class. We have soy sauce, which is two parts. So we're going to draw them as close the same as these two as possible. And we have orange juice of one. So it says that we need 42 in all. So, so far we have three, four, five, six. So we can take the total marinade and divide it by the total in our tape diagram to get the value of each section of our tape diagram. So each of these is worth seven parts. So our final question is, is how much of each ingredient would you use? So 7 plus 7 plus 7 or 7 times 3. So we would need 21 parts oil, 7 plus 7, 14 soy sauce, and 7 orange juice. Remember, to find how much these are worth, we have to take the total in our recipe divided by the total of parts in our tape diagram. So we have six boxes here, so that's why we did 42 divided by six. It says that Alina makes fruit punch by mixing four parts cranberry, three parts apple juice, and two parts grape juice. So let's draw our tape diagram. We'll start with cranberry. One, two, three, four cranberry, three apple, and two grape. If one batch includes 30 cups of apple juice, how large is the batch of fruit punch? Okay, so this says that we have 30 cups of apple juice. So that means these three parts have to be equal to 30. So we need to find how much each part here is. And remember, they all have to be the same. Because these are equal size, we can do 30 divided by 3, which would give us 10. So that means each of these is worth 10, which means everything else in our tape diagram is also worth 10. Okay. So it wants to know how large is the batch. So that means that we would have 40 cranberry, 30 apple juice, and 20 grape. We can add these together. 40 plus 30 is 70, plus 20 more is 90. So our batch would be 90 cups of punch. Okay, we're going to cross off the are you ready for more part. And I think that these are in your packet. Um, we're going to skip this entire page. You guys can ignore that. We're going to get to the lesson summary now. So <clears throat> what we learned about in this lesson was something called a tape diagram. And it's just a way to represent a ratio. So we've learned about diagrams, double number lines, tables. These are tape diagrams, which just is just another strategy. Okay? All the parts of a tape diagram must have the same size and the same value. Okay, so for example, this tape diagram so shows the ratio of ducks to swans is four to five. So we have four ducks, five swans. The first tape represents the number of ducks and has four parts. The second part has five and it's the swans. There are nine parts in all because if we add the four plus the five, that's where we get the nine. Now, suppose that we know that there were 18 birds in the pond and we wanted to know how many were ducks. Okay, since there were nine equal parts on the diagram, and that was needed to represent 18 in all, we can do 18 divided by 9 to get the number that each box is worth. Okay, this is where the 2 came from. Okay, there are four parts of the tape representing ducks, so 4 times 2 is equal 8. So the question, or the answer to our question would be that there are 8 ducks on the pond, and then there would be 10 swans. Okay, go ahead and give the practice problems your best try. I know you guys didn't get the full lesson in class. 
So do your best. Anything that you have a question on, send me an email or come talk to me on Monday and we'll get everything straightened out. Have a really good weekend.